and welcome to Gilda Garb. My name is Sarah, and I'm your costumer. Today, I'm going to walk you through how I made the 1920 Wearing History cardigan. For those of you not familiar, this is the pattern I'll be using. It's a 1920s cardigan made from knit fabric instead of being actually knitted. This is an example made from silk jersey that I found from the Colette website that I absolutely love. I also have been looking for what the appropriate fabric would be. According to this, all wool jersey. Now, I don't have all wool jersey. I, in fact, just have polyester jersey, but that's what I'm using. The red fabric is a rib knit, and then I also used a black rib knit that I bought from Walmart. To get started, you print out the pattern, which I haven't shown, and then you tape it all together according to the directions. I personally love print-at-home patterns, except I tend to leave mine out, and then my cats chew on them, and I have to fix them. Hooray for tape. Don't know what I'd do without it. Now the original pattern is a 42-inch bust, which is about 4 inches too big for my 38-inch bust. So the first thing I did was adjust the pattern to fit me. Keep in mind that I'm completely self-taught, so the way that I adjust this pattern may not actually be correct, but it's one that I found works for me in the past, and I don't know why it wouldn't work for this pattern too. My number one concern was that it would fall off my shoulders, so instead of worrying too much about the bust, because this is a knit and it will be forgiving, I first measured the shoulder piece and fit it to what I needed. Then I found the midpoint of the shoulder and drew a straight line down the middle of the pattern. The next step was to match the back piece to the front piece. Now this one I didn't really measure, I really went by feel. So what I did was first lined up the side pieces and saw how it fit together. Then I pivoted them where the two shoulder pieces would meet. Then I found the midpoint again and drew my line. Now that I have my two lines, here's the hard part. I'm going to cut them down the middle, and then I'm going to adjust them so that the bust is approximately what it needs to be. As I mentioned before, the most important piece to fit for me was the shoulder. I hate the look of a drooping cardigan. I lined up the two shoulder pieces and took out the amount needed to make it fit my shoulder measurement. Tape it together. And now I have a pivot point. I started out with the intention of just eyeballing how far over it needed to overlap, but then I decided that was a bad plan and measured out the waist and the bust. It's a good thing I did, because it ended up being a little bit bigger than I would have wanted. Fun fact about me, I'm pear-shaped, with wide hips and a short waist, so patterns very rarely fit me. But I definitely needed the hips on this pattern to be bigger than what my bust measurement would have indicated. That required getting a little bit creative about what this pattern piece would look like. So I basically folded a bust dart into the pattern itself, ending at about the waist point for me, so that I could have a little bit more of a fitted top and then a flare for my big hips. One more measurement check, and I was in business. You'll notice I started my pattern adjustments with the back piece. There's no rhyme or reason for that, it's just the first one I grabbed. But I did the same thing with the front piece and then lined them up to match my darts. The final piece that needed adjustment was the sleeve. 
Now, I didn't want any gathering. I wanted a very smooth fit over the shoulder because again, with my shape, I needed that. I also felt like the sleeves were going to be entirely too loose. I wanted a very close fitting sleeve. So the first thing I did was measured out where the arm size was on the front and back pattern pieces. I'd already measured the top of the sleeve pattern, so I knew I had a little bit of extra that I could take out of the sleeve head. Knowing what I needed from the measurement of the body pieces, I could then adjust the sleeve independently. I first folded the sleeve piece in half from the midpoint of the sleeve head to find out approximately where I'd be taking the width out. Then I just fold it over, taking about an inch and a half out of the width of the sleeve. I also folded down the top of the sleeve head to straighten it out, and then I was ready to cut. I'm going to start by showing you the hardest part of cutting out this cardigan, cutting the back piece on the fold. With a slinky knit, you have to be very careful to be able to cut on grain when you cut on the fold. I measured down the line of one of the ribs and then placed two pins so I knew exactly where to fold my fabric. Luckily, my fabric is a ribbed knit, which means I could use the lines of the rib to make sure that I was getting a straight cut. Let me talk a little bit about my fabric choices. I specifically chose this knit instead of a more stable knit because according to my research, this was probably a little bit more common. I found several catalog examples of cardigans that were made out of a slinkier knit like a silk jersey or a wool jersey. The closest that we have that was in my price range is a polyester knit, so that's what I went with. This one is ribbed and that's kind of how I was able to make this pattern out of something that's a little slinkier than a more stable knit like a ponte or a cotton lycra. To make sure that my fabric stayed on grain as I smoothed it out, I pinned the edges of the fold. Again, if you're using a more stable knit, you don't need to do this, but my fabric wanted to wiggle away no matter what I did. Just for reference, I've sped up this part of the process by about 400%, which will give you an idea of how long it actually took me to get my fabric straightened out. You're welcome. One of the reasons I was so excited about this pattern is because I'm currently obsessed with sewing with knits for my modern wardrobe. I'm part of several communities about sewing with knits that are on Facebook, and they would all be appalled at how I cut out my patterns. I use pins, when I really probably should be using fabric weights, or the more popular option of a projector. But that's not how I roll. Some people are also coordinated enough to use a rotary cutter to do their pattern cutting out but I use scissors. And I think that's important to show you because a lot of costumers seem to be afraid of sewing with knits. It's actually pretty easy and you can use all the same tools that you already have. You just gotta face your fears and cut the fabric. The last important part to note is that I am not cutting a twall or doing a mock-up in any way. I'm just kind of adjusting my pattern as I sew. And the reason is the knit is going to be very forgiving on fit, so I really don't care as long as the flat measurements are correct. The rest of the pattern pieces were cut single layer, which is a lot easier. I know this isn't the most thrilling part of the video, watching someone cut out fabric never is, but I did think it was important to show how I used both my rotary cutter and my scissors to get smooth edges on my cuts. You'll see me here on my neckline, smoothing it out with the rotary cutter. I'll also do a rotary cut with my ruler on the shoulder piece to get a straighter line and so that my fabric doesn't wiggle around as I cut. One more pro tip. When you're cutting with scissors, it helps to put your hand on the part of the fabric that you're not cutting out. It helps keep it from squiggling around so much. Ah, the sleeve. I left this part in, not because it's interesting, but so that you could see me have an existential crisis about how I made my sleeve pattern. As I got to the sleeve head, I started thinking 
how is this going to look when I actually sew it to the shoulder? And I thought to myself, not great. So I tried fiddling around with it a little bit to see if I could figure out what I was doing wrong and if I had actually done it wrong. In the end, I decided no, I was on the right track. So I put the pattern piece down and cut my sleeve head. Since I'd already unpinned the pattern piece, I used my rotary cutter to cut the parts that I knew what the lines were, and then I used my scissors to create my own little sleeve head. I don't recommend this, but it worked out for me. Historical accuracy is cool and all, but I prefer sewing knits on my serger. I have a Singer serger, and I like it very much, even though it was really cheap and it came from Amazon. I highly recommend it. Sewing a knit seam with a serger is just like sewing a regular woven seam on a sewing machine. You get a nice stable finish, and it's really easy. It stays in place, it doesn't move around, and it's a lot easier than trying to use a zigzag stitch. If you have to use a machine though, I wouldn't even use a zigzag stitch, as you'll see in just a minute. Even though I filmed sewing every seam, I'm not going to show it to you. Just this part, so you can see how I constructed the sleeve and how easy and quick it was once I put it together. I am going to show you how I did the cuffs of the cardigan because I modified them from the pattern just a little bit. The first thing I did was sew the cuffs together and finish off the edges. The way the pattern is actually written, I should have sewn the two ends together and made a two that would then be attached to the sleeves. But I wanted open cuffs, so I didn't do that part. But once I'd sewn these together, I turned it inside out and made sure that I had nice pointy corners. This was probably the hardest part of making the cuffs. Because you can't take the side off of a serger, at least not mine, I have to sew the cuffs inside out. This is nerve wracking just a little bit because of how many pins and how small of a space I'm trying to work with. I managed to do it and so can you. Once I've finished sewing all the way around the tube, to finish it off, I just kind of sew off the edge once I've crossed over. I deliberately sewed this seam so that it would be on the right side of the garment because I was turning up the cuffs and setting them with the buttons. It makes for a nice finish, at least I think. Remember my existential crisis with my sleeve? I'm about to show you how it was useless because it fits in there perfectly. I used a clip instead of a pin to make sure that my seams met exactly and that both seam allowances were pointed the correct way. And then, just like how I attached the cuff, I sewed around the circle of my sleeve. This part was very finicky, and maybe you won't have that much trouble if you use a stable knit, but because mine wanted to slink away, I had to keep adjusting the edges as I sewed. The struggle is 100% real, as the kids say. It was 100% worth it though, because really, this seam looked beautiful. Holy cow, look at that amazing seam. So remember how I told you I was going to show you how I used the sewing machine? I used it to put on the pockets and to sew my hems. In retrospect, I probably should have put a deeper hem on this cardigan, but I only used about a half inch hem. For top stitching in knits, I don't like to use a zigzag. I don't think it looks professional. And honestly, I just hate a zigzag stitch. Instead, what I do is set my stitch length to just a touch shorter than the longest stitch it'll do. And then I just sew, like I would on a woven. It actually works out really well if you have your tension right. Sometimes I don't. I don't care. I steam it out and it seems to work out fine. 
In case you're worried that sewing with a straight stitch instead of a zigzag ruins the stretchability of the knit, well, I'm about to prove you wrong. It has a nice stretch, actually, and I'm really pleased with it. All right, the next part comes with a little bit of a confession. Now, the original pattern had a guide for where to put the pockets, but I ignored it, and I just eyeballed it. And honestly, I don't feel bad about it. I'd basically lined it up with the ribs of the knits, decided where I liked it, and pinned it down. One of the reasons why I didn't use the pattern guide is because it was pretty much bisected by the line I drew to adjust the size, so I felt like this was probably the better part of Valor. I repeated the process on the other side, eyeballing the placement. As I use my hands as a ruler here, I feel the need to again point out that I'm 100% self-taught, and looking back at this, I maybe should have used a ruler, but in this sewing room, we fake fabulous. I sewed the pocket on with the same stitch that I used to hem. I'm not exactly proud of this work. It looks okay, but it definitely got a little wonky. I do have a walking foot, and maybe I should have used it. Honestly, for the purpose of this video, if you don't have a walking foot, you can make it nice. I was just tired and didn't want to anymore. One more note about the pockets. I did, again, modify them a little bit from the original pattern. I put the little black flaps on them as contrast. I liked it better than just a plain, solid pocket. It may have complicated things a little bit, but honestly, I like the look. The last and final step of making this cardigan was hand sewing. And if you've ever tried to hand sew knit, you know it's not very fun. I persevered. I sewed down the collar in the front so that it would keep its fold over. Again, because this knit is pretty squiggly, I needed to do this in order to have it look consistent every time I wore it. I also sewed down the corners of the pocket so that there wouldn't be any gapping because I made the little black triangles. In an amazing stroke of luck, I had these vintage buttons that matched my fabric almost perfectly. Unfortunately, I only had five of them, so I had to abandon my plan of using a button to embellish the pocket. I used the buttons to tack up the cuffs, and that seemed to work out pretty well. And here's the finished product. Overall, I felt like it came out really well and looks exactly like how I wanted it to. It'll be good for historical wear and for modern wear. Here's my completed 20s look. I love this cardigan and I hope you enjoyed watching me make it. Like and subscribe to see which era I do next.